Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the homestead. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about our backyard pig setup and the things that you need to, to start with pigs because a lot of people think it's, it's a big involved process. It's not as hard as you think for you to get involved and start raising your own pigs. Before we get too far into it, I wanna say thanks to Purina for sponsoring this video. If you follow us over on Instagram, you've seen that we have a partnership with them for this year's batch of pigs. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. However, now let's get some feed out for these pigs, get them fed and take a look at our setup. Pigs are one of those animals that, kind of like chickens, you don't need a ton of land to raise them. If you're looking at being more self-sufficient with your food, they're a great place to look. See, pigs are one of those animals where once you move past chickens, which are a great way to make your own proteins, whether you're using them for eggs or you're raising meat chickens, but pigs get into the territory where you're getting real amounts of substantial meat through not as much input to that product. With meat chickens, you're talking two months worth of work to raise 50 or so meat birds or 25 or whatever you want to raise. But with pigs, you're talking a much longer commitment time-wise, but you're also getting a lot more protein out of it in terms of, of you're getting pork chops, you're getting ribs, you're getting ham, you're getting bacon, you're getting a lot more of a variety of cuts versus chicken where you get tired of eating chicken after you know a couple weeks, you're eating the same chicken all the time. With pigs, you have much more variety and it's a much better protein source overall. So I think bang for the buck, if you're limited on land and what you can produce, pigs are a great way to go. So you're thinking of raising pigs and you're curious about what you need. Well, we're gonna go over our setup right now that we use for getting our piglets started. And then we'll talk really briefly about what we do when we're out in the woods. But for now, if you're raising two or three pigs, I don't say raise one because you don't wanna raise one pig. They always wanna have a buddy. But if you're looking to raise two or three pigs on your homestead or small farm, this is really all you need that we've got going right here. Over here, you can see we've got our water. This is a standard uh, food safe 55 gallon drum that I was able to find locally on Craigslist. I think I paid 25 bucks for it. Uh, it does have a closed top uh, with two bungs on either side. I did cut a hole out of it at one point a couple seasons ago. And the reasoning on that was uh, we raised our pigs into December and we needed a water heater in here. So I had a stock tank heater that I had dropped in the top but you don't necessarily need to do that if you're raising pigs in the summer. We use standard half an inch uh, watering nipples down at the bottom there. Uh, they are fitted into half inch bungs that you can get at Tractor Supply for like seven bucks a piece. The nipples are only like two, three dollars a piece. It's easy to fill. We put it near the fence. That way I can just run the hose over, drop it right in one of these bungs, turn the hose on, fill it up, and you know I can go do other things while this is filling up. I do put T-posts around it, and what that means is that the pigs can't really get to it and knock it over. By putting those T-posts on it, it, it keeps it in the ground and, and keeps the pigs from rooting under it. And if they do root under it, um, it won't let them kind of hollow out what's going on under here and knock the thing over. Which is a big concern when you're using a 55 gallon drum because pigs become very strong as they get older. And as hard as it is for us to overturn a, a 55 gallon drum of water, uh, a couple of pigs will do it pretty easily. And if they knock it over, they're not gonna have water uh, in the least case scenario, you know, and in the worst case scenario, one of the pigs could get injured or hurt. But this is super simple and super affordable and super low maintenance. Uh, 14 bucks for the bulkheads, 25 bucks for the barrel. So let's say that's 40 bucks there and then, you know, another five bucks for the nipples. We have chicken waterers that cost almost as much as that. That's not bad as far as I'm concerned. You'll hear people talk about training their pigs to the watering nipples. Lucky for us this year, our pigs came nipple trained, which was awesome. We didn't have to worry about training them. However, if your pigs don't come nipple trained, 
I've found the easiest way to get them nipple trained is just to smear some peanut butter on the nipples and they'll learn really quickly. They'll find the peanut butter and they'll learn that water comes out of those pig nipples. So once one pig finds it, uh, the other pigs will see them drinking and then they'll learn too. It, it happens really quickly. As far as feed goes, uh, for piglets, when they first come here, we use your standard rubber bins that you can get at Tractor Supply or any farm store. We have found with those, we can split them up and kind of keep the pigs apart so they're not fighting over food. Uh, if you put them in a trough, typically you'll get them lined up and sometimes they'll, they'll kind of nudge each other and get really aggressive over food. That's not what we're trying to do. Um, I don't have any more. I don't have any more feed. So we just use these feeders off the bat and we have to make sure that we feed them every morning. If you're just raising a couple pigs, uh, you can get away with something like this for the entire time that you're raising them. If you have more pigs, you may want to look into getting a trough style feeder or a hopper style feeder where you can put some feed in the top of it and, and let it kind of filter out to the bottom. The biggest concern there is if you're raising uh, meat pigs versus lard pigs. Lard pigs, you do want to meter their feed a little bit and don't let them eat free choice. Uh, but meat pigs like this, these are uh, Berkshire Duroc Crosses. You can pretty much offer them free feed later on in life. And that gives you the ability where if you want to take a long weekend, you know, you've got three days worth of water, you can put three days worth of food in that feeder. Really all you need is somebody to come and check on your pigs and, and you're good to go. But for now, for raising piglets from start, these buckets work fine. And if you're only raising two or three, the buckets work fine as well for that. You don't have to go bigger or get some elaborate feeder for your pigs. If, if you're raising pigs in the backyard, maybe 30 bucks for two of these things, 15 each. These guys are big fans of the Purina feed so far. They've been on it now for about a month and everyone is growing really well. So like I mentioned before, if you follow us on Instagram, you are probably aware that we partnered up with Purina for this year. We fed our pigs a variety of feeds over years past. Uh, typically the way we've looked at it was we bought whatever was most affordable on the shelf uh, because we, we do sell our pigs and we were looking to turn a profit. And that's unfortunately how a lot of people do it, including us. We were no better in that manner. If you're not aware, we run our pigs in the woods. That allows them to get as much of their diet as they prefer from rooting and foraging and looking for bugs and mushrooms and tender shoots of grass and, and young trees and anything they find on the floor of the forest that's around us, they're allowed to eat. And we view that as part of giving them the best diet possible because it's close to what pigs would get in a natural environment. Unfortunately, they're not able to get all their nutrition from the forest, so we do have to supplement them with grain. We realized after last year that the best forest pasture in the world, letting our pigs run out there, is pretty much worthless if you're not giving them a quality grain. It just so happened that Purina had reached out to us and asked if we'd be interested in partnering up, and Purina was one of the feeds that we were interested in anyway from the get-go, so we decided to make the jump this year and we're going to be feeding nature's match for the entire season we've been feeding this pig and sow so far uh, this is a little bit different than a lot of standard maintenance feeds that you'll see out there on the market it's not a grower finisher which is nature's match also offers a grower finisher but sow and pig is designed for all types of herds of swine um, essentially it's the proper nutrition that your pig needs from 25 pounds all the way up to finishing weight but it's in a formula that if you have a mixed herd, if you have breeders, if you have slightly older pigs, if you have younger pigs, uh, if you've got pigs that are fresh off weaning, but you've also got pigs that are ready to go to market weight. Oh, thank you. Emma brought me a little flower. This is a feed that you can feed your pigs if you've got multiple different age groups of pigs together. What we really like about it so far is Purina has done a great job to look at the nutritionary needs of pigs of various ages and come up with a mix that works well for all of those pigs. And for us, it kind of represents a one size fits all solution. I won't say for sure that we're looking at bringing breeding stock onto our farm, but if we do in the future, this could be what we feed them because we're going to have feeders, we're going to have breeders, we're going to have a variety of types of pigs on the farm. Maybe. I'm not saying we will yet. We'll keep you updated over the course of this growing season for our pigs and let you know what we think of it. But as of right now, if you're raising backyard pigs already, 
this might be a good route to take. I definitely recommend checking out the feed. The shelter for your pigs is arguably going to be the biggest and most complex of any of the things that you need to do when you're raising pigs. Behind me, you can see that's a four by eight shelter. Uh, I built it on just a couple pallets that I put together with one sheet of four by eight plywood. And then I stacked pallets around it and then built a roof on top. I have a whole video about building that shelter. I'll link it up in the corner here. Yeah. But your pig shelter, especially if you're not getting into really cold temperatures, doesn't have to be super involved. Uh, three sides and a roof and a dry floor. High and dry is kind of the, the, um, the moniker there that you want to use. You want to give your pigs a place to stay dry. You want to give them a place to get out of the wind and the rain. But other than that, as long as it's got three sides and a roof to it, and it, it's the primary wind is going to be hitting it from the back, it's going to be a good shelter. You don't need to build a ton here. So don't get too caught up in it. Uh, the price of lumber is really high right now. This is super basic and it, it serves all the needs. Obviously, as we get, as these pigs get larger, uh, I'm going to have to put another one in here. We do have one in the back that we used last year. I just hadn't moved it up here yet, but we'll get two shelters in here and they'll be good to go. I just realized that I said the shelter is the most complex thing of the whole pig raising pigs deal, but I changed my mind. The fencing is the biggest part of the whole thing. Your pig fencing for a small operation doesn't have to be elaborate at all. Uh, the biggest thing that I can say is that you do want to invest in an electric fence setup uh, because it's going to help you out in multiple ways. Uh, it's going to predator proof your pigs. Uh, we've had issues with bears recently coming into the area and one bear in particular, um, you know, going after the pigs possibly. But that electric fence is also going to train your pigs to stay inside when you have a small hog panel set up like this. Right here we've got four hog panels set up and we're using T-posts to hold them in. Obviously the hog panels go inside of the T-posts. Uh, so this is creating a 16 by 16 area where we can get these pigs trained to electric, used to it so they're not challenging borders. We're just using poly wire on the inside. For a, a person just trying to do a few pigs in the backyard, you don't need to ever really go bigger than this as long as you keep up with uh, maintenance, scooping poop, keeping it cleaned up in here. Obviously, if you want to just let it go and you don't want to scoop poop, uh, it's going to get pretty gross in here after a while. But if you're doing two to three pigs, 16 by 16 feet is a great starter size and if you need to go bigger you can in here we have the hog panels and we've got one strand of electric fence going around the bottom at maybe six or seven inches off the ground and that's really just to keep the pigs from rooting right up to the hog panels your hog panels run about 25 bucks a piece your t-posts run two or three bucks a piece so you're talking for the perimeter fencing here uh less than 200 bucks the main expense there, not in that $200, is going to be your electric setup. With the electric fence setup, your poly wire is cheap, your insulators are cheap, uh, the ground rods are cheap, the wiring for that whole thing is relatively inexpensive, but you are gonna have a charger as part of that expense, and the charger can get a little expensive. Uh, this is a 60 mile charger. I think it was around 100 bucks. This is one part of the system where you don't want to cheap out because this is what's keeping your pigs safe. It's what keep, it's what's keeping your pigs in. Nobody wants to go chasing pigs through the neighborhood. Nobody wants their pigs getting out and getting lost. Nobody wants their pigs getting attacked by predators. Your electric fence is the one thing that I really tell people not to cheap out on. So, you know, if what you can find locally is a $200 charger and it's a good one, uh, I would spring for it. You know, it's not something that is, is one and done. You use it year after year after year. So the electric fence itself, uh, learn to love it, learn to embrace it. I would advise not doing it without because it is one of those things that it makes life a lot easier and it makes things a lot safer for your pigs. Before we go, I do want to show that this is not a one size fits all solution. So I reached out to some friends who I know also raise pigs on a small scale and they sent me some footage of their setups. I'm going to put that footage in here to kind of show you that what we do is not the only way to do it. Hey y'all, it's Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm and I just wanted to take a quick second to show you our setup for raising pastured pork. The pig that we raise here on our farm is the Idaho pasture pig, which is a true grazing pig. My pigs eat about three pounds of grain per pig per day. And I like to soak my pigs food, so I just feed them in a simple feed tray. Now, as far as the grass goes, when we don't have grass in season, well, that's where this hay feeder comes in handy. 
really simple contraption four pallets piece of tin over the top now as far as shelter when you're raising pigs out on pasture these a-frame shelters work awesome these are made up out of six pallets and some tin it's nice that the pigs can go in there and lay down and have some room to spread out they don't need a whole lot of height because they're laying down when they're in there and the last thing is our watering system. Again, I took what I had. So you can see that they've got a pallet that they can stand on and you can see that I've got some galvanized parts to add these pig water nipples to. Other than that, it's just connected to a hose and that does kind of limit its range, but you know what? I can run a whole lot of hundreds of feet of hose. So that's basically it for our pig setup. Very simple feed station, very simple shelter, very simple water system. If we can do it here at Rockin' 8 Farm, just about any of you can raise swine in your backyards. I hope you all are bold enough to give it a try. And until I see you again, be happy and live healthy. Hey there, everybody. Brian here from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. Hanging out here with my boar, Boris, out by one of our pig enclosures. And Jack had asked some of us to share a little bit about our pig setups. And, and so I thought I would share with you my most simple setup, which is this one right here behind me that is made out of four hog panels uh, set up in a square, connected at each corner with quick links, and then held up by T-posts. Um, I utilize a deep litter method here, so I get wood chips and just keep adding... Uh, wood chips and keep adding wood chips here in the uh, in the paddock and it really does uh, keep the smell down and um, and works very very well now the housing that I have here is actually made out of pallets and then it's covered with some scrap plywood and then I have some old cast off tin as the roof so very very cheap didn't cost me a lot of money in fact I think I have more money in screws than I do anything else in that house now the way I feed my pigs is right on the ground I tried putting it in buckets and um, the rubber totes and it just didn't work they would flip it over and eat it off the ground anyhow so I said if you're gonna do that I'm just gonna feed right on the ground and so that's how I do it here for watering in this paddock here I just have uh, one of those rubber bowls that uh, I fill with water a couple times a day and uh, seems to work well for them. I only keep two pigs in this uh, in this area, two adult pigs. It's a breeding pen really is what it is for us. So very, very simple setup, four hog panels. And, uh, and then I did just put in some electric fencing because, well, Boris didn't want to stay where he's supposed to be and got in with my other boar yesterday and they had a big fight. So I did just install electric around the bottom of this area. And that's actually my most expensive part of this installation was that electric fencing. So hopefully this helps. If you are interested in more information about it, reach out to me, brian at thehomesteadjourney.net, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. If you have any questions on anything in this video, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below. I really like bringing new people into the fold and getting people interested in farming on a small scale. One of the things Jackie and I always say, and we, we have it on our website, is that we want to grow as much food as we can for ourselves and some for other people, but we also realize that we simply don't have the land or resources needed to grow food for everybody or to grow food for tons of people. We can grow food for some people, but not tons. Ideally, what we'd like to see is not all of our viewers, but a bunch of our viewers start doing things like raising pigs, growing a garden, raising chickens. You know, we like pigs. That's something we've kind of settled on. But everyone out there has the ability to do more to be a little bit more self-sufficient. So if you have questions, leave them down below. If this video has sparked you to do something at home on your own small farm or homestead, let us know about that too. We'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching everybody. And again, special thanks to Purina for sponsoring this video. We like what they're doing. We like that they're supporting small producers and I'm happy to have them on board as somebody that we're working with. Get ready, we're gonna say goodbye. Well, not yet. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.